Today we're talking with Liam Powers, award-winning artist, stone setter, and hand engraver. Today we have Mr. Liam Powers here. He's all the way from Portugal. He's visiting us this week. And we're gonna talk about what you're doing under the microscope a little bit, and then we'll ask you some questions to get to know you a little bit better. Sounds good. Are you ready for the grill session? I am ready. All right, let's go. Once again, it is that. So, first question of the day. Walk us through your journey into Liam Powers jewelry. Oh man. Well, I've been making jewelry for about 20 years now. Started um, with an elective class at a community college in Humboldt County in California. And um, yeah, it just kind of clicked. I'd, I'd always been doing some sort of artwork up until that point and kind of knew that's the direction where I wanted to go in life, but didn't know what medium it was going to be or um, how that was really going to manifest. But um, once I started making jewelry in the class, um, it just kind of clicked. And, it, and the amazing thing about jewelry is it kind of incorporates a lot of different other um, mediums as well. Like you have your drawing, you have your um, rendering if you want. Um, it's almost sculptural also, yeah. you know, there's a little, even a little bit of engineering that goes into it, depending on how complex you want to get. So it's kind of a eye opening to see um, how many different mediums could kind of fit into one. Mm -hmm. And that was what really attracted me to it. Um, and then of course I, I finished my first piece and um, showed it to a friend and he immediately offered to Bye. pay me <laughs> to make a piece. So, that was kind of that was kind of it. it. Just took off from there, and um, yeah, 20 years later, I've it's taken me all over the world. I, I I've studied at um, a school in Italy and um, lived in in Rio for a little while, and I've just done courses wherever I could and and gathered um, different techniques and knowledge and um, um, inspiration from around the world and kind of incorporate it into my work. And uh, yeah, it's just steadily, organically grown into what it is now. So I feel very fortunate that it all worked out and I'm able to do something creative for a living, you know? Do you do other things on the side? Like, you know, some people will kind of paint on the side or they'll do leather work or, or you focus mostly on your jewelry. I mean, these days, Changing diapers. And... <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah. talk about that a little bit too? Tell us about your family. Yeah, yeah. So I have two kids, five and two, two boys. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my side hustle right now. Yeah, I feel hopefully, that. Hopefully, hopefully it core. pays off eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Other than that, just, you know, trying to find enough time to get everything done. Just working. Yeah. Making jewelry, yeah. You travel quite a bit still too, don't you? Yeah, we just recently moved to Lisbon, Portugal, actually, a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a massive move and kind of a, a stressful one. But um, yeah, so far it's been amazing. And it's, it's ever since I... Uh, took a course at La Arte Arafe, the school in Italy in Florence, where I did a couple advanced jewelry classes there. And that's actually where I met my wife as well. And um, Really? Yeah. Huh. She, was, she was studying fashion and I was studying jewelry. And um, so ever since then, we kind of been plotting and scheming a way back to the, to the Euro life. Mm. <laughs> so it kind of it finally worked out. With so her studying fashion does she have any input on what kind of jewelry you make or she's like oh you need to try this actually you know she is 
she is kind of my secret weapon to be honest, <laughs> I knew it, yeah. you know because i tend to <clears throat> i mean i can be I, can, I go very complex as you probably know if yeah. you've seen my jewelry um so she kind of reins it in sometimes or she just has an incredible eye mm -hmm. for just design in general so um you know if i'm ever doubting myself or or just have a question about a certain design i always just run it by her and she'll just be you know completely honest about it. yeah sometimes it's painful but uh it's she's usually right so critique yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a little secret weapon i have in my back pocket it's great yeah so were your mom and dad artisans or you know did you kind of pick that up from them or no but they were they were just the right amount of um supportive mm. maybe too much maybe too much gave me a little too much confidence you know but it's good it's why good why do you yeah. say that i mean it's good to have confidence but you you also need to know your limits right mm -hmm. but also when you have that kind of blind confidence you're willing to try anything right yeah. so you just you have to be okay with failure of course mm -hmm. but um well, yeah, we, so I think that was, you know, that's that's definitely something that I'm really thankful to my parents. You know, they weren't artists, but they they gave me the confidence to to believe that I could do this, you know, for a living. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you feel like your move to Portugal kind of influenced some changes in your work or cuz you post like different inspirational pieces? Uh, that you know kind of influence your work so what do you feel like you draw from the most as far as influences um well my the overall inspiration i feel like has come from just the the love of like sci-fi and art nouveau so it's kind of like this combination of, you know, Art Nouveau is very organic, yeah. flowy, and then contrasted with almost like a biomechanical ship from outer space kind of thing. So it's somehow been able to meld into um, the style of jewelry that I make now. Um, so I've heard that you used to refer to your work as space deco do you yeah. still kind of <laughs> yeah i mean I've, I've tried to come up with some some type of name that might catch on or like a recognizable name you mm -hmm. know that can describe the style of jewelry i make your own niche like i said you know sci-fi meets art nouveau deco i mean just kind of made sense at the time mm -hmm. um i don't know if it's gonna stick but mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it kind of describes it pretty well so do you feel like your style has grown pretty organically out of the things you're drawn to or did you were you always drawn to those kinds of things or has it slowly developed through different courses that you've taken at different places no this yeah this is something that i've just been drawn to since since being a kid, you know, yeah. since I was a kid, just always into that style. Um, anything sci-fi, um, you know, I remember seeing Alien the first time and just being like, oh my God, the, the <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff, just been really into that. And then um, once I got into jewelry, started seeing all the different kinds of jewelry out there, really drawn to the Art, art Nouveau, Art Deco, um, Bulgari is definitely at the top of the list as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I draw my inspiration from, I guess. What's your favorite piece that you've created so far? Um, favorite piece that I created. There's Done. been, there's been like three really big pieces for me. One was. 
a ring that I made at the school in Italy, which is, it was like a sphere about the size of a grapefruit. Um, and that was probably, to Dang. that to that date, it was the most challenging piece that I made. And it was, it was a huge accomplishment for me because when I designed the piece and showed the instructor at the school, you know, he told me it was impossible. Oh, <laughs> He's like, there's yeah. no tools for this. You can't make this. It's too big. It's too crazy. Like, what are you thinking? And, um, you know, that made me want to make it even more. So Did to you? be able to, to create it and create it exactly how I envisioned it, just kind of, um, it was a huge accomplishment for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, shortly after that, I I left the school. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> I was going to say, did you, you like that instructor? Was yeah, it like a socket I kind of finished you? it, showed it to him, and was like, bye. <laughs> That's awesome. But, um, and then after that, I, I had a custom order, a really large custom order from uh, a friend who wanted a chalice made. Yeah, I saw that. And that was another one that, the, yeah, the, the projects that are, that are just so big and so complicated that it requires me to learn t new techniques or like it's a, it's a, it's a massive problem that needs to be solved. Mm. I'll design the piece. This is exact. I, I'll just design the piece of what I want to see and then I just need to figure out how to create it, you know? Puzzle. Whether there's tools for for that piece or different components of it. If there's not, then I'm gonna have to figure out how to create a tool or whatever. But one way or the other, I'm gonna figure out how to make it. And um, so that chalice was one of those pieces. Um, and that, that actually won an award in AGTA and so that was another one of those moments, those defining moments where, you know, it's kind of very rewarding and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, kind of let me know that I was still on the right path and doing, you know, being able to, to move forward with my art and with my passion and making a career out of it at the same time is just really special. And then, um, the piece after that, that was another defining piece, was a was the custom band that I made for a AP, an Automer's Baguette watch. And um, yeah, that was that was a wild one. That was probably took Why as wild. <laughs> probably took as long as the chalice and the ring combined, if not more. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've never never created a custom watch band before. And Did you build it from like? complete scratch or From, did you have yeah it was the same it was the same idea of just designing the design the the, the idea that I had not knowing how it was going to be made mm -hmm. but just designing. this is the band that I want to make this is how it's going to go together I knew how it was all going to fit together I knew it, that it would work but I just didn't know how it was going to be created. <laughs> Had you ever so, messed with watches before? Like, yeah. So this was a, this was actually um, one of my one of my best clients, a repeat client, mm -hmm. and um, he actually commissioned me to make my first watch, which was just engraving, some platinum inlay stuff mm -hmm. like that, um, and then he asked me to do the custom band because custom bands was something that I wanted to do for a while, mm -hmm. and. Um, so again, he was like, you know, trusted me enough to, That's awesome. to, uh, to commission this piece. And um, yeah, it was just a, a wild experience. And um, yeah, each link, everything was, was carved from wax and by hand. And um, yeah, it was just a very intense piece. And to finally get it finished to where it operated exactly how I wanted it to, it looked almost better than I had planned because in a piece like that, you kind of have an idea of the, I design like the outside profile and kind of a base design, but I don't really know what the embellishments are gonna look like. Once it's in metal and you see the surface spaces and all this stuff, then then it all kind of starts coming of you where the- Yeah, where the bright cuts are gonna go, where yeah. the pave is gonna go. So. You, you know, I have an idea of what it's gonna look like, 
but it doesn't really come into full focus until it's in the metal form and like you're ready to embellish. So cool. to have it come out as well as it did is just, yeah, it's a special one. And that, that probably took a little over a year from beginning to end. How do you feel the expectations of your clients has changed over the years? Um, do you feel like they push you well, to do better? I th yeah, some. It's, it, it's interesting because most of the clients, like I said, just have complete trust and they, they have been following my work and they trust my 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 skills and my intuition for the design and this and that and they'll just give me free reign but there's also the clients that they still have that trust but they do have um a lot of their own um desires when it comes to the design mm -hmm. and um that you know it it used to kind of bother me a little bit but um over time, I've learned to kind of use it to my advantage. And when you collaborate with a client on that level, you actually, it kind of makes you think outside of your own box that you created for yourself. Yeah. And maybe you're gonna come up with a design or an idea that there's no way you would have come up with yourself, yeah. you know? So um, yeah, collaborating with the clients is, is um, been really really beneficial been really cool uh yeah that's pretty cool how they they trust you enough to give their input and trust you with their ideas and also trust you to do whatever you want i mean that's, that's yeah it's the, it says it's, a lot it's about the ideal artist. situation and really if you want to build that clientele and get those repeat clients coming back it's you have to be willing to work with your client you know don't be so closed off listen to what they say because and what they're asking for and, and, and even their ideas and you 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 really might learn something along the way too so um yeah build those relationships with the clients it's, it's worth it well can't wait to see what you put out in the future thank you so much for coming and letting us with all these questions Thanks. today. Thanks for talking to you. Well, welcome to the team, Liam. Thank we look you. forward to talking to you Thank in the you. future. Thanks. All right. Perfect.